evening again. This is our Bible study time. Praise the name of Jesus. Welcome to those online. Praise the name of Jesus. This evening, we are going to be dealing with the Holy Spirit, the study of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Before we start, let us open in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you because you are merciful, O God. Father, even as we sit around your word this evening, O God, Father, I pray that you minister to us, O God, Father, through me and to me also, O God, in the name of Jesus. Touch your people, O God, as they will view this, Father, this message, O God, Father, that it will bring clarity of thought to them, O God. It will also bring salvation to those who need to be saved, Father. So minister, Father, I pray by your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. As I said this evening, we are dealing with the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, before we start, I just want to read three portions of Scripture. My first portion of Scripture is Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. And it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters, shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. My second portion of scripture is Acts chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, and it says, in Acts 2, 3 and 4, and it says, And there appeared unto them clover tongues like a, a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And my last portion of scripture I want to read at this time is 1 John 5 and verse 7. And it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Word who is Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Praise the Lord. So this evening we are dealing with the Holy Spirit. And the first part I'm dealing with is he is a person. He is a person. Many times we hear people speaking of the Holy Spirit and they will talk about a thing, a force. But no, the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost is a person. He is the third person of the Godhead, also known as the Trinity or the Triune God. He is not a force or some type of power as some persons think. He was there when the world was formed in Genesis 1 and verse 2 it says and the spirit of God moved over the face of the earth he was there when Jesus was baptized Matthew 3 16b and he saw the spirit of God descended like a dove and lightning on him he was also sorry we also have the accounted man we will also get at the accounted man 1 19 11 Luke 3 21 and 22 John 1 32 to 34. He was also there in Jesus' resurrection, Romans 8 11. But if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, right? And first Peter says, first Peter 3 18 says, For Christ also had once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might break us. To go, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Therefore, we see that the Holy Spirit is definitely part of the Godhead. And this evening, the first part we are dealing with is he's a person. The Holy Spirit has characteristic as a person. Right? And we deal with a lot of scriptures. There are a lot of scriptures in the Bible that speaks of the Holy Spirit. He searches and has knowledge. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 to 11. But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Verse 11 says, For what man knowing the things of a man, save the Spirit of the man? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. The Spirit searches. So the Spirit of God knows everything about God because He is God. So He is able to reveal things to us. When something is revealed to us, it's Holy Spirit that reveals it to us. 
praise the name of Jesus. As I said, we are talking about him as a person. Firstly, Holy Spirit gives gifts. We give gifts. We are people. We are people who give gifts. First Corinthians 12, 1 to 11, it speaks about him giving a spiritual gift. Verse 4 says, I'm going to say First Corinthians 12, verse 4. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. These spiritual gifts are wisdom, word of wisdom, sorry, word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, working of miracles, prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. So he gives spiritual gifts. And verse 11 says, But all these work at one and self, same spirit, divided to every man separately as he will. So Holy Spirit gives gifts. He's a person, just as we are. Give them, you give them, I give them. Holy Spirit also give this. Holy Spirit has a mind. Roman 8, 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. He has a mind. He has a mind. Because he is a person. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus. You and I, in church, on a Sunday, we testify. We testify of God's gift, goodness to us. Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus. That's John 15, 26. But when the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, is come, whom I will send unto you, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, when proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. So Holy Spirit speaks of Jesus. Whatever Jesus did on earth, the Holy Spirit will speak of it. Whatever he did, whatever he says that he will do, Holy Spirit now is the one that will bring it into our revelation. We will be able to understand it better. Hallelujah. Personal pronouns. We use personal pronouns when we refer to Him, or to the Holy Spirit. John 14, 16 to 17, and it says, And I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another comforter, that He, Holy Spirit, may abide with you forever. Verse 17, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeketh Him not. Him again is Holy Spirit before you too, neither knoweth Him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So we see the personal pronouns. He's being referred to as him and he. John 16, verse 8. And when he is come, he will reprove the word of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So when we speak of Holy Spirit, we can use these pronouns also because he is a person. Praise the name of Jesus. Personal acts as ascribed to Holy Spirit or caused by or credited to Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit speaks. You and I, we speak. Right? Acts 13 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work we ought to I have called them. So we see here, the disciples were praying, and Holy Spirit said, separate me, Barnabas, and so for the work I have for them. So he spoke. He's a person, so he can speak. Praise the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit intercedes for us, Romans 8, 26. And remember, we are speaking of him as a person. He being a person. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helped him our infirmities, for we know not what we pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings in which cannot be uttered. Many times we are praying and we we lost the words. Most of them the situation is so intense, we don't even know what to say. So we start to go, mm, 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 ah, we don't know what to say. Holy Spirit now comes in and starts to intercede on our behalf. So He speaks to the Father for us. He now relates what the growing and the growing is 
to the Father, he intercedes on our behalf. Holy Spirit is a teacher. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. All that Jesus did and said when he walked the earth, in this time, Holy Spirit now is bringing it to us. He has given us a revelation knowledge, things that we may not understand. He is revealing it to us. Hallelujah. Remember we said before that Holy Spirit speaks of Jesus. The things that Jesus said is what he will bring to pass. So he teaches all things. Hallelujah. When you read the Bible, when you read the scripture, when we read in the New the, the, the Gospels, Holy Spirit does who give us a revelation knowledge. He teaches us what is being said. He's a teacher. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I have heard persons and I have seen it for myself, persons who may not put up kind of read or read properly by reading the Bible, going through the Bible and they begin to read. I have noticed it. I have one family member who was not a, a, a reader at all. But she went through, she keep going through the Bible and we will go through and teach her, teach her certain things and she was able to read the Bible before she passed. She was able to read. Praise the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit guides and forbids. Acts 16, verses 6 and 7. And it says, Now when they had gone through through Phrygia, Phrygia, sorry, and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. After they were come to meet Misa, and they were arrayed to go unto Bethania, but the Spirit suffered them not. Holy Spirit guides and forbids. They were going to Asia Minor, and the Holy Spirit did not want them to preach to Asia Minor, so he forbid them. As they were going to Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden of the Holy Spirit to preach the word of God in Asia. So the Holy Spirit forbids you. Many times we go down the road and we will say, Something tell me no past there, no, it's not something, it's someone, Holy Spirit. Or oh, you know, I was about to leave home and just all of a sudden something said, Oh, wrong, they go, no? No, it's not something, someone, Holy Spirit. He is able to forbid us from doing certain things. He forbids and he guides. He guides. He guides our footsteps. Because again, he's a person. Just as how we will guide our children, we will guide our loved ones. He will tell them what to do and what not to do, how to do it. He is able to do the same to us. We are the ones who are one, so we also have our spirit man open to him to understand what he is saying to us. So Holy Spirit guides and forbids. Guides and infobates. Also, treatment as a person. Alright, remember we are speaking of Holy Spirit being a person. Holy Spirit can be grieved. Ephesians 4 and verse 13. It says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby he has seen unto the day of redemption. You know, we grieve also. Many times people tell us things and we get hurt. And you know, we will sit down and we will cry by ourselves and we will say, but I did so much for that person, or I love that person so much, and this is how they hurt me. This is what they are saying about me. Likewise, Holy Spirit, He grieves. We can grieve the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of Jesus by doing wrong. When we do wrong, when we disobey the Holy Spirit, we know very well the Holy Spirit is telling us, don't do that. Or we should do this, and we don't do it. We grieve the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Holy Spirit can be insulted. Hebrews 10 and verse 29. Of how much sore punishment. Suppose he shall be taught worthy who had trodden on the foot of the Son of God and had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he has sanctified an holy thing and had done despite unto the spirit of grace. No. The Holy Spirit, when we, when we say, when we say that the blood of Jesus is counted for naught, 
when we do these things, when we speak ill against God and against the Holy Spirit, we insult the Holy Spirit. We insult the Holy Spirit on our way back over. Hebrews 10, 19, how much more must so punishment suppose ye shall be taught worthy who have trodden on the foot the Son of God and have accounted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified and an holy thing and have done despite unto the Spirit of grace. How much more? What, what, what punishment? And that's what the scripture says. What punishment do you think fit in for a person who does such a thing? Who has come to the, the blood of the covenant where we were sanctified and unholy thing? We cannot speak against the blood of Jesus that we are sanctified with. And there are persons who does that. The blood of Jesus has washed us, has cleansed us. We are ought not to speak evil because we are sanctified by the blood of Jesus. And when we do these things, we are insult the Holy Spirit. We insult the entire Godhead. Not only Holy Spirit, we insult the entire Godhead. Praise the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit to be insulted. Holy Spirit could be lied to. Remember, we are speaking to him and speaking of him being a person. Just as we can lie to our brothers, our sisters, our loved ones, Holy Spirit can be lied to. In Acts um, 5 and verse 3. But Peter said unto Ananias, Why hath Satan filled the heart, that heart, to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price, the big price of the land? Remember, Ananias and Sapphira, they said they're selling the land and they bring part of the money to the serving of and now they are telling Peter this is what they sold it for. But immediately the Holy Spirit picked up on them. So Peter was able to say, ah, Ananias, why had Satan failed thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? We can we, we will, we'll try to lie to the Holy Ghost, but he will figure us out. He knows, he knows the heart of me. So when you and I lie, Holy oh, Ghost already know that we are lying. Praise the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit to be to be blasphemed against. And this is a terrible sin. This sin, when we blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, is no forgiveness. Matthew 12, 31, it says, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be be forgiven unto men. When we blaspheme, when we talk evil against the Holy Spirit, when we do things and we say, Holy Spirit, make us do it, do wrong, say wrong, we will not be forgiven. We will not be forgiven. Praise the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit will be blasphemed against. Another part of the Holy Spirit now, we are speaking of the deity of the Holy Spirit deity or the divine nature. Remember we said in the beginning that the Holy Spirit is part of the Godhead, the third person of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And because he's part of the Godhead, he also has a divine nature. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. Therefore, equal to God. Holy Spirit equal. Praise God. Hallelujah. We we cannot, we cannot call the Holy Spirit a force because he's not a force. A demigod is not a demigod. He is part of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is called God in Acts 5, verse 3 to 4. But Peter said, and we just had that there, but Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Praise the name of Jesus. Why did he remain? Was it not in thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied to man, but unto God. So we see the name in changeable. First we see Holy Ghost, and in other part of the scripture we see God. So Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is God. Praise the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit is called God as part of his divine nature. Another part of the divine nature, the name of the Holy Spirit and God are used interchangeably. 
1 Corinthians 3.16 Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? 1 Corinthians 6.19 Now, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? Which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? So we see the name of God being used into change of the Spirit of God. God. Holy Spirit. Interchangeably. Praise the name of Jesus. Another part of his deity, the Spirit's association of quality with God and Jesus. And we will see that in the Great Commission, Matthew 28 19. It said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. 2 Corinthians 13 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. First Peter 1 and 2 it says elect according to for knowledge of God the Father through the sanctification of the Spirit or to the obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ praise unto you and peace be multiplied. Praise the name of Jesus. So the association of equality with God and Jesus. So Holy Spirit is equal to God and Jesus. They are one. One. Praise the name of Jesus. And if I read it, there are three that bear record in the heaven, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. His divine attributes. Now that was his deity, now his attributes. Holy Spirit is eternal. Hebrews 9 14. How much more shall the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God? Purge your conscience from their roots to save the living. To, to save, sorry, to serve, sorry, the living God. Let me read about it. How much more shall the eternal spirit offer himself without spot? To God, purge your conscience from their roots to serve the living God. And in Deuteronomy 33 and verse 7, God is also eternal. So it is saying here, eternal spirit. But in Deuteronomy 33 and verse 7, it speaks of God being eternal. So we see that they have the same divine attributes. Another attribute is Holy Spirit is omnipotent. Omnipotent means he is all powerful. In Acts 1 8, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Psalms 104 verse 30. Thou sendest for thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. So, Holy Spirit is omnipotent. Holy Spirit is all powerful. He was able to renew the earth. He is able to give the power to the believers at that time, or the Holy Ghost and the believers at that time. He's all powerful. Holy Spirit is omniscient, all knowing. 1 Corinthians 2 10 to 11. But God had revealed them unto us. By his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. He is omniscient, he's all knowing. There's nothing that you and I can do that Holy Spirit does not know. There's nothing that we can do or say that Holy Spirit does not know. Every thought, because he is all knowing. And not only is he all powerful or all knowing, he is everywhere. Holy Spirit is omnipresent. He's everywhere. Psalms 129 and 139, sorry, verse 7. Whether I shall go from thy spirit, or whether I shall flee from thy presence. Jeremiah 22, 23 to 24 speaks about God being everywhere also. So we see Holy Spirit just as God is everywhere. He is everywhere. He's omnipresent. Remember I'm speaking about his divine attributes. Holy Spirit with relationship now with Jesus and God. 1 Corinthians 6.11 speaks. And it says, 
and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Relationship to Jesus and God. So there's a relationship with Jesus and there's a relationship with God and the Holy Spirit. Everyone work together. They are working together. And such were some of you, but ye were washed, but ye were sanctified, but ye were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Another divine attributes. If I continue, I will go for the divine attributes. Yes, the divine attributes, we said, Holy Spirit is eternal. We'll find that in Hebrews 9 and verse 14. Holy Spirit is omnipotent. Acts 1 and 8. Meaning he's all powerful. Holy Spirit is omniscient. He's all knowing. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 to 11. Holy Spirit is omnipresent. So he's every day. Psalms 139 and verse 7. Praise the name of Jesus. And then we have the relationship with Jesus and God, and we find that with 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 11. Now we are going on to the work of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life. The work of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life. Now, the Holy Spirit is very important in the believer's life. If the believer does not have Holy Spirit in your life, well, then we have some problems. We have some problems. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, believers are saved. We are filled, we are seen and sanctified. He reveals God to us, to us, teaches and guides us. We, the Holy Spirit also helps Christians in their weakness and in their daily walk and intercedes for them. The Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, helps Christians in our weaknesses, in our daily lives, and in the seas on our behalf. So the Holy Spirit is very important in the believer's life. The first thing is the Holy Spirit is a helper who teaches and reminds us. He's our helper. And we have that in John 14, 26. And as I said, some of these scriptures, we will see them coming back. John 14, 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your repentance. Your remembrance, sir. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, the Greek word for Comforter here is, Parakletos, and it is translated helper. The Parakletos, our helper, and that's who Holy Spirit is, our comforter, our Parakletos, our helper. Therefore, the Holy Spirit, our help, is our helper. Right? So He brings back things to us, He teaches us, He helps us. That is the work of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life. Praise the name of Jesus. Another uh, helping part of the Holy Spirit, he is a teacher. Alright? He is a teacher. So 1 Corinthians 1, chapter 2, 13 and 14, it speaks, Which things also we speak not in words, which man wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Verse 14, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritual in this world. Now, Holy Spirit, when he teaches, only the spiritual man can understand. There are times that we will be telling the unsaved man things and they will laugh at us, because they will not understand us. Praise the name of Jesus. When we were born again, we enter into a dimension of the Spirit. We can be taught by Him to understand the things of God because now we are not just mere man, but we are also living in the Spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit brings scriptures that we have read or heard into our remembrance and teaches us. 
because now we are in the spirit realm. So we are able to understand spiritual things. The carnal man cannot understand the spiritual things. Hallelujah. It says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritual in the soul. So the carnal man will think that these things are foolishness. But we who are spiritual, who live in the spirit realm, will understand the spiritual things. Praise the name of Jesus. Another way in the spirit, Holy Spirit helps us, He convicts the world of sin. John 16, 7 and 8. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is, it's the expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. With it says, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Holy Spirit is able to convict the world of sin. When we speak the word to people, when we minister, when we go out and we preach the gospel, it is not us doing it. Yes, we speak the word, but Holy Spirit is who really touches the heart of the man. The word of God said, no man come unto God unless the Spirit draw him. So as we speak the word, as we share the gospel, the unsaved man, the carnal man now will hear the word and the Holy Spirit now is who will convict him. The Holy Spirit now is who will enter in and touch his, his inner man and he will be like, hey, I need this Jesus. I need to be saved. So it is not us. When we go and we, we minister to people and they get saved, we are not to get puffed up and glorify ourselves, but we have to glorify our Father in heaven. Because Holy Spirit is who to be joined. Praise the name of Jesus. And he is the person who touches the heart of men. Holy Spirit is a guide. John 16, 12 to 13. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them. No, verse 13. How be it? When the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Right? The Spirit is a guide. He is called the Spirit of truth. Jesus told his disciples that the Holy Spirit will make known what he hears and will speak of what the Father speaks. If we open our heart when we read the Bible and allow the Holy Spirit to guide us, we will not stray from the biblical truths. And we will find that in 2 Peter 1 and verse 3. When we read the Bible, we are not just to read the Bible as we read in an ordinary novel or an ordinary story book. But we open our spirit man and let the Holy Spirit now teach us, teach us what is really being said. What is really being said? Now we know there are uh, different aspects of different translations that make it easy that we could relate on and, and see what is being written. But yet we need Holy Spirit God to minister to us now with our spirit man. Because remember when the Bible was written, it was not written in our century. It was not written in the 21st century. It was written centuries ago. So we know when you read the Bible, we have to get to understand that who it was written to, who wrote it, what was taking place, why was it written. We have to have all this knowledge and Holy Spirit is the one now to really give us an understanding and to bring it now into our day, in our time, that we will understand, hey, this is what was taking place and this is how it could be related to our present day situation. Praise the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit dwells in, believe, in believers and fills us. He dwells within us. First Corinthians 3 16, it says, and we know all know this verse of scripture, knowing not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Holy Spirit dwells in us. He lives in us. Our body is his house and his temple. Praise the name of Jesus. And he fills us. He fills us. So therefore our temple, our body has to be clean, have to be pure. And sometimes, yes, we may be saved, we 
we not curse it, we not doing any wrong and all these things. We don't drink alcohol, and, but also our diet. We have to do our diet, our exercise, all these things. We have to keep our bodies active. We have to keep our bodies active. Not only, yes, we know the spiritual thing, but also physical. And we don't always look at these parts. We have to be physically fit also. The Spirit of God is present in our lives, in the lives of believers. Our bodies are now His temple. Praise the name of Jesus. So He, fills, he dwells in us and He fills us. He fills us with the Spirit. He fills us with the Spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. We are not just ordinary people now when we see Jesus in our lives. When we get filled with the Holy Spirit, we are not just ordinary people. The Holy Spirit helps the believers in prophecy. John 16, 13. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak, and he shall show you things to come. He shall show you things to come. Again, as we read the Bible, we have the book of Revelation, as we read the Bible, Holy Spirit will teach us things to come, revelation, knowledge. You know, some people, with your son, some drop in your spirit and you get a, as we look at a light bulb moment. Many times, some of them be reading a scripture event. Many times, we heard people speak on it, we heard it preach, we heard somebody uh, mention it. But it's when, it's only when we get a light bulb moment in our spirit, man, we realize, hey, this is. This is what it says. That's when Holy Spirit minister to us. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we understand. He also is there to, to guide us when we look and we see what is taking place now. We see the, we see the prophecy of the Bible is falling into place. Because now we see what is taking place in Israel. And we know the prophecies are in the word of God. So he's able now to help us in prophecy to understand. Hey. Our, our Savior is coming soon. Our Savior is coming soon. The coming of times is here. The things that are prophesied, He will make it known unto us. Even someone will be prophesying something to us. In our spirit, man, it must click. It must click. If somebody is telling you something, telling you that we are prophesying and this is what God is saying, and your spirit telling you something different, and something is contrary. Something is contrary. It must be. Who is listening, prophesying to you? Holy Spirit also will connect with that spirit. And in your spirit, you will say, Yes, this is it. This is God's way. This is what God is really saying to me. So there must be a connection. He is the source of revelation, wisdom, and power. First Corinthians 2 10 and 11 says, But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit search of all things, yea, the deep things of God, is eleven. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. God gives his Holy Spirit, his Father, sorry, the Holy Spirit, so we may know him better. The Holy Spirit opens believers' eyes to the hope of salvation and to the inheritance in Christ. He is a source of revelation, wisdom, and power. The Holy Spirit opens our eyes to things, spiritual things. It is spiritual things. So we don't just see things now natural. We see it in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. He gives the Holy Spirit. So that the believers are able to see what is taking place. Hallelujah. It opens our eyes to salvation and to our inheritance in Christ. So that we know for a fact we are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus. We are sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Because our eyes are open to that. Our spiritual eyes. Yes, we are in earth here. We live on earth. We are among the people on earth. But yet still we have a heavenly home. So then we have that revelation knowledge now that hey we have a higher calling we have a higher calling acts 1 8 says but ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in both jerusalem and judea and samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth 
Christians has access to power, revelation, and wisdom from the Holy Spirit. Because we have power. We have power. When we pray, when we lose and we bind, when Jesus lay, we have power. We have access to God. When God said, what, when we pray, whatever is loose on earth is loose to heaven. Whatever we bound on earth is bound, is bound in heaven. What we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Because of the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. Working in us. Ephesians 1 17 says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. It is important also that the believers may have wisdom, use wisdom. And the word of God says, Let man lack wisdom, ask. Ask of him and he will, he will give us. So the Holy Spirit gives us wisdom. So we don't just have to go talking, talking. There are times we need to talk and there are times we need to hush. There are times we need to listen and hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. My former pastor, she said something to me once and I, I kept that in my heart and, and in my thoughts all the time. She said, somebody could be telling you something, but you just listen to the words. Listen in your spirit, man. So you will know when you listen within your spirit, you will know that person is talking truth or not. You know, listen in your spirit, man. Let your spirit connect with the person's spirit. And if there's a if there's confusion there, you know something is wrong. There must be that clicking. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So it's a source of revelation, wisdom, and power to the believer. Remember I'm saying the work of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life. We have this already. The Holy Spirit is the gifts to the believers. Right? And we said the gifts, look at it, you see in 1 Corinthians 12, 17, 11. So I will not go back over that one. Also, the Holy Spirit is a seal in the lives of the believers. The Holy Spirit is our mark of adoption as God's children. Jesus sent his Holy Spirit to the first followers so that they could be confident in their salvation. He is our seed in the lives of the believers. He has sealed us. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. Ephesians 1 13 says, In whom ye have trusted, after that ye have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, he was sealed with the spirit of promise. So we are sealed in Christ. Holy Spirit has sealed us. You know, years ago, when, the king, when we have the kings and being ruling, they will, they will use the, the ring and they will seal. And they will, whatever they write, and they use the king ring and it's sealed. That means, yes, I, the king, have said this. I have proclaimed this. This is how we should be at put the seal in the spring. Holy Spirit has sealed us. So whenever we are sealed, we are sealed with the seal of, Jesus, of, of the Holy Spirit. So, hey, God, well, this is my own. These are my children. They are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. As children of God, the Holy Spirit is now resident in us and has sealed us as His own. The Holy Spirit helps in our weakness and in the seed for us. The Holy Spirit helps us align with God's will by interceding on our behalf. He helps us by God's will and intercedes on our behalf. Romans 8 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh it intercession for us with God which cannot be uttered. At times when you and I don't know what to say to God, Holy Spirit come alongside and intercedes on our behalf. He come alongside us. Come alongside us. So He helps in our weaknesses and intercedes on for us. Another way Holy Spirit helps us He makes believers new and grants us eternal life. 
Holy Spirit works in the light of believers to renew, to sanctify, and to make us whole. He works in the lives of the believers. And He grants us eternal life. He sanctifies us. He keeps us strong in Christ. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 10 to 11. And if Christ be in you, the holy the body, sorry, is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness, we see level. But in the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead, dwell in you, he will he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Praise the name of Jesus. It is the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in us. And that spirit will quicken our mortal bodies. He will quicken our mortal bodies. So we are renewed in him. Hallelujah. He makes believers new. He makes believers new. And he gives he grants us eternal life. Praise the name of Jesus. We have God's spirit in us, and because of that, we are renewed, a renewed person. Our old man is dead. Well, the old man is dead, and we have become new. The Spirit sanctifies and enables good fruit in our lives. He sanctifies us and enables good fruit in our lives. The work of the Holy Spirit in the Christian life is an ongoing process. Holy Spirit never stops working in our lives. It's ongoing. It's an ongoing process of becoming holy through sanctification. So every day our lives are renewed in Christ. Praise the name of Jesus. Galatians 5 and verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit that he shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. Once we continue to walk in the spirit, we will remain sanctified. And we will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. Praise the name of Jesus. This evening, we talk about the Holy Spirit. So I close by saying, the Holy Spirit is a third person of the Godhead. He dwells in the lives of the believers. Our bodies are his temple. He is our teacher, our helper, our comforter, and our intercessor. He is omnipotent, meaning he is everywhere. Omnipresent, sorry, he is everywhere. He is omnipotent, he is all-powerful, he is omniscient, he is all-knowing. He is the eternal spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you today. I thank you for the hearers. I thank you for all, oh God, Father, who will view this message, oh God. Father, that you're going to touch them. You're going to minister, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I pray even now for persons, oh God, who maybe are, are not saved, who are not serving you, oh God. Father, even those that may be wavering, oh God, being, oh God, Father, or decisive, that your Holy Spirit, oh God, Father, is going to minister to them, oh God, Father, in the name of Jesus. Your Holy Spirit will take full control, Father. Move, oh God, by your Spirit, oh God, Father, that people will realize, oh God, Father, that you are real, God, in the name of Jesus. Make yourself real, oh God. Spirit of the living God, move over your people, oh God, and minister by your Spirit, Father, in Jesus' name I pray. Give God all the praise, honor the glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.